So Mick make mail number 35 and I've got a few packages to open. So let's get into it. This video is being sponsored by JLC PCB. They make uh, all my PCBs and if you've ordered one of the Pi projectors uh, you'll get to see uh, the quality of the PCBs that they make. They can produce one to six layer boards from 0.4 to two millimeters thick and with track widths down to 0.01 millimeters. Fingers, cutouts and also other weird and esoteric things. They are currently offering 10 PCBs for only $2 and if you are a first time customer you'll get $20 off shipping off your first order pretty cool so I'm um, not sure what I'll start off with first but let's just clear up this mess a bit okay I think I'll start off with this one because I know what it is I thought I'd give sticker mule a bit of a go and see how they went and so I got a whole lot of uh, sort of daggy badges made up they look pretty good I don't see any issues with them I think I got 200 of them made up um, I don't know what I'll use them for <laughs> I guess I'll uh, give them away when I sell my Pi projectors. Um, depends. If it adds to the shipping cost, then I uh, probably won't. So they look pretty good. Uh, I might also get some stickers made up and include those in the Pi projectors when I ship them. All right, nice. Next. And this one isn't really a make product. So I got several of the uh, Gophers. Um, Gopher is uh, essentially a product that, something that attaches to your vehicle and you can track all sorts of things like uh, fuel consumption and uh, GPS if you're using your phone. And so I got three because they ended up being cheaper than getting two or the same price as getting two. Um, and you got the little thing that you stick on the, the dashboard which sort of glows a certain color. Uh, and then this thing attaches into your IBD port. The reason why I got this is because uh, while I'm doing contract work, I tend to travel from client to client and I want to be able to track my usage, but also uh, because I have uh, five adult drivers in the house and there's always this whinge uh, when it comes time to filling up the car. So this will be able to tell me uh, exactly who's been using the car, when and how much they've been using it. Anyway, uh, that's not really a maker product, but thought that might be interesting. Now all these next ones uh, came from Element 14. So I know exactly what these ones are. So, a few MLCCs. Uh, this is a point 100 nanofarad uh, caps, which I was whinging about in the Nano PC T4 review. So I got enough of these to uh, make up 10 PCBs of the Rev2. So I've already got the Rev2 PCBs from JLC PCB, uh, and I'll be able to make them up because I think finally I've got all the uh, bits and pieces for it. So I've got those. Uh, let's see what's in this one. Okay, so I got 2.2 microfarad caps, GPIO expander, 6.8 micro Henry inductor, that's for the DC buck converter, and resistor, another resistor, battery management IC, blue LEDs, and also the uh, the boost converter. What's in this one? Uh, and this is a resistor. So I think. Pretty sure I've got everything. So I'll make these up, the first batch of 10 PCBs up of the uh, Rev2, the official Rev2. I've got several prototypes already. And once I've confirmed that it actually works, I'll ship those off to 10 of my patrons because I ran a patron only competition. I'll ship those off uh, soon. Uh, once I've, of course I've confirmed that actually the design actually works. So on to the next thing. Oh nice, okay, so these came from Seed Studio. So Seed have sent me a bunch of uh, new boards and modules. Uh, first of all, they've sent me this one. It's an AI Thinker module, it's similar to uh, the ESP32, or the ESP32S. So it's similar to a standard ESP32. Um, they've also sent the ESP32AIS, uh, which is 
similar to the 32W Rover and this has uh, audio out, uh, some fairly decent audio uh, capabilities on it and this is uh, something that they have uh, for pre-order uh, at the moment uh, and it's a camera module based on, I think it's the yeah, ESP32S uh, and it also comes with a, a camera, a little camera in there you can chuck in and also SD card and breaking out a bunch of GPIO so this looks pretty nice uh, you can attach your own little external antenna if you want to so that's pretty good and they've also sent me uh, this board I've looked up on their website and I can't for the life of me see where it is um, it's unnamed but it contains uh, ASP32 AIS from AI Thinker a bunch of buttons, two mics, earphones, uh, headphone out and I think it's external mic in as well two USB ports, it's got a USB to UI bridge uh, a couple of buttons to mash there, DC buck converter left and right audio out, GPIOs appear and also SPI there SD card, nice little unit but I haven't been able to find anything about this particular board so maybe this board is uh, about to be released, I don't know I might do a bit more digging around and see but uh, I'd like to get this going and see if I can fire up a little small camera. Okay, so I've been playing around with uh, this cam module and I haven't been able to power it up yet, uh, which is a bit of a bugger. I want to be able to get some sort of images from this. But to avoid this video not being published today, I think I'll move on to uh, this next board, uh, which is this one, uh, which I'll see if I can fire this one up. It has a lot more of the uh, features uh, than this uh, cam module. Anyway, I'll have to keep this cam module for another video. Uh, probably next mailbag, I think. Okay, so this board requires two micro USB connectors. One for uh, power and one for UART. So I'll connect up the UART first and then power. Okay, flashing lights, that's always a good sign. Okay, let's see what's on the console. Uh, so maybe and reset. Okay, definitely getting some uh, data out there. So uh, I'll see if I can fire up the Arduino IDE and program it. Okay, sadly uh, I couldn't uh, get this going in such a short length of time, but uh, I'll continue to hack around with it and see if I can get uh, get it going. So that's a bit sad. Um, both of these ESP modules uh, didn't actually get going, but I'll certainly do that in the next mailbag video. Okay, a little fishing rod, that's cute. So this is the uh, Scoobot, um, and it was part of a Hackaday, pro it was a Hackaday project, as well as, of course, a Kickstarter campaign. So, this is a nice little cute little thing for this. Okay, so uh, Bill has left me a link uh, to download uh, the latest uh, APK for Android. Okay, let's fire up the uh, Scoobot. Cool. This is pretty... Uh, it's forward. That's pretty good. Got an ambient light. Speech. Try saying something. Something! forwards hmm so that's a pretty good little uh, unit like straight out of the box uh, you can get it to do you can get it to do things um, got an RC mode which you can control it except it's going around in circles on the short white it's going around in circles oh, okay come on stop going around in circles It'd be handy if I got it around the right way so it's even got a little rover mode doesn't quite get past that. Hmm. That's pretty cool. So it's got an onboard mic, uh, which you can actually record. Beep. And then it takes a while for it to upload. Beep. Yeah, that's pretty good. So let's fire this up and see what I can do with Linux 
uh, web interface, so via Node.js. close, nearly went off of the desk. Nice. And it's got a little web interface, although a um, bit of a bug with the uh, web interface. I think it might have been due to the fact that uh, some of the node modules uh, didn't install properly. Uh, but uh, it has a nice little web interface you can control it from. So the scoop bot looks pretty good. Uh, nice little crowd supply campaign he's got up there. Probably wouldn't suggest it for raw beginners uh, because there's a little bit of fiddling around that you have to do. But Having said that, it's a nice little, nice little package. Pretty cool, and two little uh, DC motors that control the direction. It's nice. All right, thanks, uh, Bill, for that. Okay, uh, next thing. So this next one is a bit of a curious one. It's nothing I've ordered. It just appeared, and it was labelled as digital microscope. So no idea what it is. Andenstar. Okay, I've already got two Andenstar microscopes. They're pretty cheap little things. Um, okay, this is a more recent unit. Interesting. I didn't get any emails from them at all, so um, they must have just decided to send it on to me. That looks like a pretty decent unit. Excellent. I've got a nice Aussie plug. Uh, different lenses. Uh, so I did a couple of N and Star reviews. The very the first one that I did uh, was uh, the cheaper version, and then I had the um, the next version up, which is actually a lot better. Uh, the difference between the two was uh, remote control. So the first one I had to press buttons on the actual unit to take photos and so forth. So it was a little bit tricky, and it moved the the, the whole unit around. Uh, but good to see that this particular one uh, has a remote control like the second unit I reviewed. So this unit seems to be fairly similar to the first unit that I reviewed. Uh, it's got the same plastic holder. Uh, in fact it's identical uh, to the first unit so this must be one of the... I haven't actually looked at the website but I'm assuming that this one might be uh, one of their mid-range units I think. That's got LEDs in the, the base which looks pretty good. Hmm. Ah, okay. <laughs> I just suddenly realized I'm not supposed to really take that little plastic thing off. I'm supposed to leave that on. And we've got a, I don't know, a sort of lensy thing. I'm not sure what this is supposed to do doesn't attach to anything, like there's no... <laughs> okay, unless it sort of sits in. I'm probably doing it around the wrong way, but it's got a thread on this side, so I'd... Uh, I don't know. No, it's definitely not supposed to do that. I don't know why this is included. It's a filter, but there's no way to attach, attach it on. Unless I'm sort of missing something, I don't know. Maybe, you, oh I see, glue it on with this thing. I can just see the, the double sided sticky tape, so you must attach it like that. Hmm, okay. I guess it's alright. Okay, so it's the same sort of remote control that we have on the top model. We don't seem to see anything. So I can adjust the brightness of these LEDs on the base. So having fixed over, overhead LEDs is actually quite good. Uh, but they can get a bit distracting sometimes. Sometimes you need the angle of the light to be able to see things. Um, but I'm not really seeing much happening here. I'm seeing a white screen and nothing. That was going to be a good review of this little unit, but well, it's not working. 
I could probably crack it open and have a look. Okay, so I uh, couldn't get this thing going. I don't know what's going on with it. It's just all I'm getting is this white screen. So I think I might crack this open and see what it looks like in the inside. Excellent, just comes apart pretty much straight away. And what do we have in here? Hmm, okay, so LCD screen. Uh, this would essentially be an RGB 888, judging by the number of lines there. We've got some buttons there to mash. Plain old MIPI CSI, probably. So this is interesting. This is a pretty tiny card. Ah, need a smaller screwdriver for this. So what do we have? Ooh, I might have to uh, chuck this onto my other microscope so I can actually see it properly. So there's a couple of interesting things uh, with this board. Uh, first of all, it's, they've got a nice little uh, sort of ground plane around here. Uh, obviously they intended to put some sort of shielding in. I'm pretty sure that this LCD screen is a parallel RGB output. I should be able to get the output of uh, this uh, coming up on my Pi projector, which will be interesting. Don't know why they didn't include that cap. Uh, but this looks like some sort of ASIC. I had hoped that it was some sort of standard part that they would be using but of course not, it's a some sort of ASIC. We've got some sort of uh, DC buck converter here. Um, I'll need to look at the the pins. Actually seem to have two of them there, so I don't know what the voltages are. I might have to probe around and see, see what it is. Okay, so this is weird. Um, just as I was about to probe around, and figure out what the heck was going on, uh, the whole thing came to life. So, uh, I don't know, maybe it was just a dodgy connector. Maybe this extension cable wasn't properly connected in, but it's uh, fully functional. Well, I've got it open, I might as well probe around and see what's uh, inside. So I'm definitely getting some uh, clock output on the uh, SPI flash. It doesn't seem to be reading a heck of a lot of data, but, um, uh, so there's probably not much code. So that's the output of the DC buck converter which is pushing out 4.1 volts um, peak and on the other side of the caps we're getting a steady 3.3 volts so it's a 3.3 volt DC buck converter and we've got another DC buck converter over this side let's see what that is okay so on uh, this DC buck converter we're pushing out 4.2 volts for some strange reason I'm not sure maybe the uh, camera needs uh, 4.2 volts who knows but they have a two DC buck converters, uh, SPI flash and some sort of ASIC, who knows what it is. And this is possibly another SPI flash, so let's uh, probe around this one. So I've managed to figure out that this IC has something to do with the IR receiver. So it's probably some sort of op amp, um, feeding it back into the, uh, into the ASIC. And it's a fairly slow signal, as you can see it's pretty slow. I wouldn't mind actually taking this off and pulling it out and seeing if I can decode some of the SPI flash, uh, but I won't be doing that in this mailbag. And I've managed to find the uh, dot clock or the pixel clock of the uh, display, which is roughly 29 megahertz. I reckon I could drive my Pi projector from this, which will be interesting. I'd need to uh, map out all the signals though, of course. Okay, so anyway, that's uh, interesting. Put it back to normal, I think. Don't know how everything gets tangled up so much. Don't 
Don't you hate it when you have a part left over? Yeah, I think this was just the LED, so it's probably all right. There we go. Just like I bought one. I think this was for the LEDs at the top. Uh, I might just open it back up again and put them back in again. So from what I can see, this uh, Andon Star is um, probably in between the two models that I had, uh, the 302 and whatever the other one was. Um, it doesn't have any HDMI out, it's got uh, ST only. Um, it's 1080p, they claim. Fairly fast little display. Um, as you move things around, it's, it's pretty responsive. Um, it's one of the little circuit board I can look at fairly clear screen. It's actually a pretty decent little model actually. I think this is 100 bucks US uh, from at least Banggood. Um, yeah actually that's quite a nice little nice little unit. Um, but look since I have already two of these uh, I'm actually willing to <coughs> give this one away. One of the pretty good things about this particular microscope is that you can get really close to the board. So if you can see that that's pretty close and this is about the maximum you can get. You can probably go a little bit lower but uh, the focus system doesn't has a bit of trouble on oh, no. it. There we go. Probably a lot closer than one of the other models. Uh, but the only issue is it there's not a heck of a lot of space in there and if you compare it to a soldering iron You can sort of just get in there, but not really at that sort of magnification, so uh, It's good for some things not good for others, but apart from that. It's a pretty solid little unit I don't have any issues with it. So as mentioned before, I'm going to give away the Andon Star digital microscope. All you have to do is guess the number of Pi projector boards I have actually sold on my Tindy saw. Uh, so to give you a rough idea, it's greater than 300. So to enter, all you have to do is just send an email to this address, uh, or you can even post it in the comment section below, um, either way. Uh, and the first correct entry uh, will get the Andon Star digital microscope. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next week.